Greetings everyone, this is going to be the third video of a series on gravitational waves. Feel free to grab a snack, let's venture into the cosmos. LIGO's Observing Runs As we saw in the previous video how LIGO works and how black hole mergers produce gravitational waves. And due to this, space expands and contracts, parts differ, and their stretching and compressing produces light at the photodetector, which is the basis of detection of these waves. But how many gravitational waves have been detected so far? LIGO detects gravitational waves in various observing runs. The first observing run started on September 12, 2015 and ended on 19 January 2016. During the first observing run, the detector was at one-third of its design sensitivity. Since undergoing upgrades in a program called Advanced LIGO, gravitational waves from three binary black hole mergers were detected. This is the first of a detection of gravitational waves from the merger of two black holes more than a billion light years away. This is the first gravitational wave signal measured by the three detector network also from a binary black hole merger. This is the first gravitational wave signal measured from a binary neutron star merger and also the first event observed in light by dozens of telescopes. The strategy for detection of these waves is that the search is done in a matter of few months and then it's shut down for half a year or so. The team works hard to remove all the noise and get the detector closer to its design sensitivity and then the search begins again. The second observing run, which lasted from November 30, 2016 to August 25, 2017, yielded one binary neutron star merger and seven additional binary black hole mergers, including the four new gravitational wave events. The new events are known as GW170729, GW170809, GW170818, and GW170823, in reference to the dates that they were detected. Some of the events broke records. For instance, this new event detected in the second observing run on July 29, 2017 is the most massive and distant gravitational wave source ever observed, which happened roughly 5 billion years ago. This was the first binary black hole merger measured by the three detector network and allowed for the first tests of gravitational wave polarization. This event represented the first time that gravitational waves were ever observed from the merger of a binary neutron star system. Marked an exciting new chapter in multi-messenger astronomy in which cosmic objects are observed simultaneously in different forms of radiation. In the interval between observing run 1 and observing run 2, the sensitivity of both LIGO instruments were improved, and at LIGO Livingston further improvements were made during observing run 2. BNS range, a number used to quantify the performance of a detector corresponding roughly to the average distance at which we can detect a binary neutron star merger, increased from 60 million parsecs during observing run 1 to 80 million parsecs at beginning of observing run 2 and then to more than 100 million parsecs by the run's end. Each search method produces a list of candidate events which are ranked in terms of their signal strength with respect to the detector's noise, a quantity called signal to noise ratio SNR, and their statistical significance quantified by the false alarm rates FAR, the rate at which one might expect the candidate event to have occurred by chance, simply due to the noise characteristic of the characteristic data mimicking an actual gravitational wave detection. The far threshold imposed was less than 1 per 30 days, about 12.2 per year. 3 events were detected in observing run 1 and 8 events were detected in observing run 2 and all of these events are included in a catalog called Gravitational Wave Transient Catalog 1. Observing run 3A ran from April 1st to October 1st, 2019. There were many predictions of detection in observing run 3 after the end of observing run 2 which were explained by Professor Kip Thorne something like this. With this design sensitivity, the detector would be 3 times better. So you see a volume of the universe 3 cube times larger. That's about 30 times higher and when you multiply 1 a month by a factor of 31 a day, 1 black hole merger per day. We're expecting to see other sources of gravitational waves, neutron stars, stars about the size of San Francisco with masses about 1.5 times the mass of our sun, spinning with little mountains on the surface to speak heuristically, devour atoms from axial symmetry. We expect to see black hole stare apart companion neutron stars and we are expecting to see two neutron stars go around each other, collide and merge, producing a lot of electromagnetic radiation as well, so electromagnetic observation coincidence with our observation is going to be crucial. Remarkably, observing run 3A produced about three times more confidently detected gravitational wave events than the two previous observing periods, observing run 1 and observing run 2 combined. Observing run 3 added 39 gravitational wave events to 11 confirmed events listed in gravitational wave transient catalog 1, bringing the total to 50 events in gravitational wave transient catalog 2. There were many exceptional discoveries in observing run 3A, ranging from neutron stars around 1.4 solar masses to a black hole around 150 solar masses. 39 discoveries of observing run 3 are a result of upgrades to LIGO and Virgo observatories, enhanced data quality and a variety of gravitational wave searches. Recent improvements in instrumentation to reduce noise and increase sensitivity include more powerful lasers and new and improved mirrors and a better control of scattered light. BNS range increased from 100 to 110 and then to 100 
130 by the run's end. Out's alarm rate threshold of 2 per year was imposed. Out of 39 events in observing run 3, 26 were previously reported in near real-time detection alerts, while 13 are reported in gravitational wave transient catalog 2 for the first time. In the analysis of gravitational wave data, the most common data quality issue encountered is glitches. Glitches are short-duration noise transients, some of which have sources such as mechanical camera shutter or light scattering out of the laser beam. Other glitches are more mysterious in origin, such as broadband short-duration glitches called blips. Significant glitches is identified in the data, glitch subtraction is applied to remove them from gravitational wave candidates. 8 out of 39 events observed in Observing Run 3A benefited from glitch subtraction. There are many ideas already deduced for the next decade and some very fascinating ways to discover gravitational waves. We'll talk more about the future for gravitational wave astronomy in the next video. The detection of gravitational waves has now become commonplace thanks to LIGO. It's been only 5 years since the first detection of gravitational wave in September 14, 2015. From detecting 3 gravitational waves in 4 months to now detecting 39 gravitational waves in just the first half of the observing run. And every time a new type of radiation has been used for astronomy going from light to radio waves to x-rays there have been huge surprises and gravitational waves are radically different from any of the previous kinds of radiation because they are made out of oscillating ripples in the fabric of space and time so there will be huge surprises and with the fourth observing run planned to begin in mid 2022 which will include cargo detector in japan and in about a decade or so ligo india or indigo project is also going to begin so more mind-blowing discoveries are on the horizon i want to thank you so much for watching and i'll see you here again in astrophile if you like the content, feel free to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you never miss any upload.